So just the same as uh, Tristan's uh, lilac breasted roller that he showed you just now, as you came to us, the dung beetle disappeared into this hole. <laughs> but it does allow me to introduce this particular dung beetle. This is the largest dung beetle that we find at, at Juma uh, and in this part of the, the, the Kruger Park. And what I want you to do is pull your fist and if you're not a particularly large boned individual, the dung beetle is as large as your fist. So generally ladies, that is a massive beetle. I mean, it's, it's as big as an apple. Um, and it's inside right here, right now. Now, what it will allow me to do is tell you a little bit about the coprids, the, the, the dung beetles, until it comes out. So it'll come out in about 30 seconds or so. Generally speaking, dung beetles are classified into how they, they, they work the dung, how they, 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 they manage the dung. The very common one, the one that is sort of quintessentially African, is the one where you see a female holding tightly onto a ball and the male rolling the ball away. That's called tele, a telecoprid dung beetle. So they're classified into what they do with the dung. Dung beetles that roll their dung balls away are called telecoprids. You then get endo and ectocoprids as well. So an endocoprid is the, is a dung beetle that lives within the dung ball itself. An ectocoprid is a dung beetle that produces the dung or works the dung un directly underneath the dung pile. And that is exactly what this dung beetle is doing. It's too big to roll a ball. The ball would be the size of a soccer ball. So what this particular dung beetle does is excavate a tunnel. Now I want to show you how much sand has been excavated here. This is the amount of sand that has been excavated from below this, this buffalo pat. It's a massive amount of sand. You're looking at a tunnel with a chamber at the end, at least this big. What the dung beetle then does is she and he come out, it's a pair, and they pull all the dung that they can into that hole. So the, all this dung from this, from this uh, buffalo will eventually go underground. That then obviously saves it for themselves exclusively, barring a couple of parasites onto that particular dung. And they then, la here she comes, here she comes. Awesome. So she's going to come out of the hole now. Let's see if I can just move that for you. Look at the size of that dung beetle. She then doesn't roll a ball. She's just collecting the dung. See where she goes? She'll pull it into the hole and then she goes and stores it at the end of the chamber. When she's got enough, she'll lay her eggs there and then she actually waits at the entrance. There's a sort of parental care given to her babies and she'll live in this hole for a bit. Isn't that awesome? Just have a look at that. So now obviously my hands are not the smallest hands. I don't have particularly big hands, but you can see there's some scale. How, I mean, that is that wide from leg to leg. Chris, you've asked, is a beetle an insect? Yes, an insect. Um, this is a particular, it's an arthropod or a jointed legged insect and Further down, it is a beetle, a coleoptera, uh, meaning hard shell as far as I can, I can gather, or, and it, it refers to the wing covers. These are elytra here. Normally insects that fly have got four wings. In the case of these beetles, the, the first two wings are hard, and then they've got big membranous wings underneath there that they used to fly with. And this dung beetle can fly. It's one of the largest insects that can fly in actual fact. Where are you going? She's now cleaning out her hole a little bit. See if she can fetch some more of this dung. I don't quite know what she's doing. These are predominantly nocturnal beetles to believe it or not. And I, you don't really, I don't really watch these beetles at all. You normally see them flying around lights in a campsite and I see them in their holes, but to actually witness one doing what they're doing here is pretty rare. You, you're very privileged watching this at the moment. So definitely look and learn. This is not a very common thing to see out of here. Now we're just practicing obviously ad breaks at the moment so if you'd bear with me while I just put in some practice so some of you will be going away for a break at the moment please don't go anywhere when you come back from your break of course we have more of these beetles and things like it as well as the rest of my colleagues doing what they are doing All right so that's practice over I hope I didn't mess that up too much trying to do too many things and uh, all at once and there you can see her 
pushing that dung ball. So you see not a large amount of dung, she collected it. Now using that spade in the front and her feet, she'll now push that dung ball down her hole and pat it solid underneath the ground. So Ali, you wanted to know if a dung beetle ate anything else beside dung? Absolutely not, Ali. They just feed on dung. So they feed on dung, they breed in dung, they live on dung. It's dung for a dung beetle is ecstasy. I don't know if, uh, you know, if there was a sort of cosmic way of doing things, I would imagine that when a dung beetle uh, sees a pile of dung or smells a pile of dung, it would be like a kid getting an ice cream after not having one for a bit. I can imagine wild excitement and much joy every time they see some dung. A little bit different from the way we think about dung in any case, but I can only imagine that there has to be some joke or some pleasure going on with these dung beetles. Anyway, we're going to leave these, this giant dung beetle to uh, her administrations and we're going to carry on uh, with, the, um, with the game drive.